I don't know how many times I've been asked the question, either through email or on social media or even in person. Jason, how do you edit the game footage that you record? The answer has been the same for several years now. I edit every bit of video I record through LumaFusion for the iPad. Come here, I'll show you what that looks like. When you open LumaFusion, you're going to get just this basic layout. I like to keep all of my sources on the left-hand side, my preview window here at the top right, and then all of my scrubbing timeline at the bottom. You're going to be asked to hit this plus and start a new project the first time you get this out of the box. I keep mine on the frame rate, aspect ratio, and color space of the video that I'm using. I don't want it to change. I don't want to try to, to, to readjust anything. I just want to be using whatever it is that my camera has given me for that particular project. In order to go and find the video that you're wanting to edit, most of the time, most people will keep that in their Photos app on their iPad. If it's on your iPhone or if it's on another camera, airdrop it over, send it over, put it on an SD card and move it over. But get that into your Photos app and it'll be easy to find. If you do a lot of video editing, and you need a better way to organize and handle this, keep in mind, the iPad will, in fact, read, and LumaFusion will edit off of a solid-state drive. You can plug this in to the USB-C port on the side of your iPad, and it will find, you can navigate to the photos, the videos that are on that SSD card, if that's helpful to you. I've edited several times off of this crucial X8 one terabyte portable SSD card, and it works very well. But for the purpose of this video, I do have them in photos. I'm going to choose not all photos and videos, but videos only, so that my videos are a little bit easier to find. The ones I'm using are a couple of older files. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, they are videos that I downloaded from my streaming YouTube channel, and they will be... Uh, 1280 by 720. This is not going to be a nice 4K edit that I get to make. I would love to have some current 4K baseball footage, but my season starts next week, not this week. So we'll get the idea. It just won't be as pretty a picture as what maybe we could have gotten out of a 4K file. If I know where the highlights are that I want to, I want to go ahead and pull out, I'm going to tap on the video file that I'll be using. And then I'm going to scrub these yellow brackets allow me to scrub to the point in time where I want to pull a, a video. And because this is a sideline HD video, then I can look for the batter that I'm wanting to, to be at bat whenever this highlight needs to start. And so I'm just scrubbing through until I see the name of the kid that I know has made this hit and I'm pulling their highlight for them. All right, I think I'm pretty close there. And I'm, I know I'm not going to want the rest of this. This is a this is a two-hour uh, baseball game, and I don't want all of that. So I'm going to scrub from the other direction as well, so that I only have just uh, about 30 seconds of video to scrub through. Now that I have moved my brackets in closer to one another, I can take that same file over here on the left, and I can drag it onto the timeline. When you do, it's going to be it's going to be uh, zoomed out as far as possible. So I'm going to want to zoom in a little bit. I can pinch to do that and resize it when it's zoomed out so far. I also want you to know that you can double tap and get a zoom in and zoom out function there as well. The main video that you'll be working with goes in this center highlighted timeline. I always like to take and select that and then duplicate my audio file. That way I can, I can work the audio file separately than I work the video file. That's something that's very handy when editing pre-recorded video. Now I'm going to listen to what this sounds like, see how much of it I have. Nice little shot to the left-hand side of the field. Good, solid single. Yes, 
catch a little bit of the game sounds, catch him rounding first base because of the way we had our Mevo cameras set up. I think we'll go ahead and end that here. Now, when I talk about clipping in or out of this video, when I, when I want to edit it down to where it goes, now I can take the, the, uh, the triangle here at the end here and I can pull it back to the place where I know it wants to be. It's going to snap to where that blue line is up and down. So if I've placed it there, it's going to let me go find that pretty easily. Or I can just take that and I can hit the scissors down here and it will cut both audio and video at the same time. It retaches the audio that's been cut after the line to the video. So when I delete the video, it deletes the audio as well. And so now I have a clip, him stepping in, getting ready, pitcher going through the wind up, his hit, his run to first, and then we see that the play is over. It's a good way to pull a clip into whatever highlight reel you're making through LumaFusion. Now, if I want to go and find that same kid, find his at bat in a different game, I would need to make sure I pulled a game <laughs> where he hadn't already graduated. So that, that kid has already gone on for this next video shot. So I'm just going to pull somebody else's at bat. Let's see. And I believe this is going to be a good one. I'll scrub to the beginning of that one. I'll scrub from the end of that one. And let me talk to you about, about manipulating the screen here in LumaFusion. You can use your finger like I'm doing now. You can use the, your trackpad if you have a keyboard attached to your iPad, or you can use the Apple Pencil. There's another way to do this, and I'm going to talk about that for just a moment at the end, but it may be what more folks would actually uh, have use for, so stick around for that. Let's scrub this back down. Oops, missed it. Let's scrub this back down to let it be just a few seconds. Again, this is a two-hour video, so I'll put my brackets where I want them. I'll take that video file and I'll bring it over to be after my first single. All right, because I like to have my audio separate, I'm going to make sure that that video file is highlighted and use this little tool here that brings my audio down to its own separate file. That way I have it uh, I have it separately. Right, let's listen to what that sounds like. Down, drive it. Got a little chatter from the dugout. Pitcher in the wind up. Good crack of the bat. Base hit right up the middle. He stumbles going around first and catches a little flack from the dugout for that as well. As he makes his way back to first, that should be a good spot to end that highlight. So I will use my scissors tool and cut, delete everything after. So now I have two highlights. I have this single from the behind the plate view. Hit. Good crowd response. Come around first. Looks good. Nice hit. Catch him coming around first. And get him coming back to first. So now that I have two files in LumaFusion, I have two clips from those two files, let's look at what it takes to make sure our audio is about like we want it. It sounds a little bit soft to me. And so these audio controls, uh, it would allow me to mute the main file if I just wanted to have one audio file coming through here and, and, and not let audio run through both of those. It would allow me to push a little bit of gain up to 12 decibels of gain there on the file itself and up to 12 decibels of gain on the output slider as well. If I found that my, my audio was a little soft for that game, it gives me some good control there. If you can't see those whenever you set up your LumaFusion, they are a, a toggle switch away down here at the bottom. You can turn those on and off and you can turn that part on and off as well. So uh, if you want to clean it up some, you're not worried about audio yet, it gives you a little more space, but if you need to have those audio files and, and what the, the controls are there, then you can open those up as well. I keep them open all of the time. Now, if you're trying to post this to a different kind of social media other than than it takes a, a, a landscape picture, you can take the wheel at the bottom right 
and you can choose to change the aspect ratio into all of these choices. So you can go with a portrait, you can go with a more uh, squared off look if you're trying to put that onto, onto Instagram. Uh, but I'm going to leave it to the original file uh, aspect ratio to be 16 by 9 landscape. If you find that you need more screen space than what you have here, these places here in between the, the panels, you can take and, and move them so that you have all the space that you need. You can even change the layout to some pre-configured options here at the bottom with this icon. And then let's look at how to export this file. I'll click the share button here. It's second from left. It's the middle button here at the bottom. And I'll choose that I want this to be a movie export and I want it to go back into my photos app. I could send it straight to YouTube. We could airdrop it from here. Uh, but photos is where I want it to go. And then I have all of the control of the settings for what I want this, this video file to be written as. So I have from a 480p all the way up to a 4k file that I can choose from. I'm going to leave it in its original form. And I can have video quality of, of from the smallest all the way up to ultra. And those actual megabits per second numbers will change depending on what the file actually is. And so if it's, if it's 4k, then standard will be 50 megabits per second instead of 12. So you kind of get a gauge of how big this file is going to be by, by looking at your video quality in megabits per second. You've got audio quality settings. You have your video codec. Even you have, you have the ability to change that if you want to. And then it's going to tell you how long your video was and what the file size is. Hit the share button again here at the top and it will write this video quickly. Saving to photos. And now I can go back into my photos app and I can find that file. The most basic of video editing tools because LimaFusion has so many more options for you. There are overlays and there are transitions. There are titles. You, you can add so much to your highlight reel if you want to, but just as far as pulling it from your Photos app, scrubbing down to the clip that you want, and then exporting that, that's the very basic. The, the one thing that I was going to tell you that you might like better than using this on your iPad is you can actually use LumaFusion on your Mac. So when you go into the Mac App Store and you search for LumaFusion, you actually do get a response. It's going to be in the iPhone and iPad apps section, not in the Mac apps section. But if you'll click there, then you can see that LumaFusion is one of the choices that you actually can download. I've put it on this computer. This is an M2 MacBook Air, by the way. And I have done several, several projects in LumaFusion on the Mac, and it works incredibly well just by using the touchpad here. Or if you have a keyboard and mouse, you can use that as well. So LumaFusion, great option for editing highlight clips of your recorded baseball games.